Hi there everyone and welcome to the latest episode of On The Hook. My name's James Madsen and today I am fishing the beautiful Jurassic Coast. This is the far right hand side of Chesil Beach. Uh, the sea's nice and clear, the sun's out. I've got three rods fishing in the water and hoping to catch some place. Fingers crossed we'll see a few bites. Uh, there's lots of crabs out there, so uh, we've really got to work the baits, especially when you've got three rods on the go. Obviously, you have to try and increase our chances of catching a fish or two. So, um, yeah, let me show you some of the baits we're using. Your classic king rag, king ragworms. We have some lugworm, which I dug a few days ago back in Somerset. Sand Bay lug there. And we also have some peter crabs. I'm going to do a lugworm bait on this uh, on this rig here. Gonna lug are quite small. I'll probably put three on each hook. I'll slide them up the baiting needle, connect the needle to the hook and slip it on. Squeeze that down. Nice worm up on the actual hook as well. We've got, we got four beads on as well. I think they're eight mil beads for a bit of attraction. Hopefully, we catch a fish or two. Think about a bit of an inquiry on the right hand rod here. I may well have a fish on. First fish of the day. Let's uh, go and have a look, see what we got. Absolutely chuffed to bits with that. It's not a massive place, but it's uh, legal. Beautiful spots in the sun. Target species. It's been a tough day so far. All that hard work, working those baits has paid off. Coming out the mouth are those four eight mil bright yellow beads, which obviously did the trick in attracting it. Place the sight feeders, so a uh, little bit of bling, as they say, sometimes helps, especially when the seas is clear as it is today. I wanted to take this opportunity today to just share a few of my tips for fishing Chesil Beach in the hours of daylight as we head into early summer. It can be quite a tough time on the beach and I've hopefully got a few little, few little tips, a few little things that I do that uh, might help you out. Key thing uh, to think about when you when you start heading into later April, early May, um, is the spider crabs. They're, they're, uh, numbers are building, and we'll start losing hooks when we're using monofilament. So, one thing that I do, and I know other other people do as well, and it works very well, and that's just to add six to eight inches of 80 pound braid to your. Uh, hook lengths, obviously the part that you attach the hook on, onto. So you're still going to get your bait stripped, but you're not going to lose your hooks. So you're not going to go through quite so many rigs. Many anglers, myself included, like to have our next bait. Um, so we've cast out, we've bait a spare rig. Obviously it's getting warmer and baits can dry out very quickly in the sun. A very simple trick is to basically bury your bait in the sand until you're almost ready for your next cast. Obviously, preparation is key. The famous saying, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. I, I really do spend a lot of time personally getting my gear to, together before a trip, um, tying rigs, collecting bait, etc. Another thing, you know, which is connected to that is when, when we are fishing is working those baits. So having those rigs ready to go, having spare rigs baited up, Keeping bait on the hook is a really simple and obvious, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's an area that a lot of people get wrong. And often it's because we're not working hard enough on the beach. So if you really want to stand the best chance of catching a place or whatever your, whatever your target species is, you've got to keep bait on the hook. So my, my tip is keep busy on the beach. 
uh, have, have spare rigs ready and wind in at regular intervals. You can time your casts um, and try and work out how long that bait is staying on the hook for. And I can tell you something now, when the spider crabs, when the spider crabs are active, it's not very long. So I remember uh, lessons learned in the past. I remember fishing with a good friend of mine and uh, first few sessions on Chesil Beach, he did a lot better than me. And I, after a few sessions, I sort of went up to him and I said, well, what's, what's, the, what's the difference? He said, the main difference is I work my bait and you cast out, have a sandwich, laze about, um, and you're basically, you're fishing a lot of the time with, with no baits on the hook. So work those baits, the, the more work you put into your preparation and you're fishing on the beach, the greater your chances of success. Connected to preparation is looking at your tides. So whether you're fishing a spring tide or a neap tide, um, you want to be looking at your high water and low water periods. And then depending on what species of fish you're targeting, you're going to have golden periods throughout the day. And often with flatfish, they often come on the feed after a slap period. So as that tide begins to pick up, they can suddenly switch on the feed. And often in Chesil, um, tide is your friend. Sometimes there's a bit too much tide. But I really like those periods in the tide where you know, it's coming down to a slap period or it's coming off a slap period and just building back up again. So if you can uh, try and work on your, on your local knowledge of the venue, there, there are uh, charts and other things available online if you, if you look for it. And you can actually work out a pattern, a tidal pattern, and then you know, that might give you a bit more enthusiasm throughout your day knowing that there's a good chance fish will come on the feed at certain times in the tide and obviously you can make sure that you, you, you're fishing the right times in the tide you know you're not you're not turning up at the wrong time and packing up before it gets good again so I think that's something that you know you can work on I think time on the beach helps a lot but also you know a little bit of research beforehand certainly doesn't go amiss. Just a bit about bait really, um, obviously most of us have bait accessible to us in the tackle shops which is great. Some of us like to gather our own bait. Um, I'm here fishing today and I've got a lug that I dug a couple of days ago. I've got crabs that I've been nursing for uh, since the weekend, um, keeping moist etc. So obviously if we've got a decent bait, again we're going to give ourselves the best chance of catching a few fish. But not only that, I think you know, the bearing in mind that the weather is getting warmer, we need to look after the bait. So, you know, it's simple, get a cool box, get some ice packs. Something that I do, and it's um, something, it's very simple, but I layer, I, I layer my um, cool boxes with newspaper. So I'll have, a, I'll have ice blocks, a layer of newspaper, ice blocks, another layer of newspaper, just to keep those ice blocks, you're keeping the air away from the ice blocks, keeping them colder a bit longer, then I put my bait on top and then I put more layers of newspaper, just trapping the air and um, trapping the cold air in basically. As anglers these days, we're very conscientious about the welfare of fish. Um, something that I like to do is use, I, I take a plastic fish bucket with me. It's always got some fresh seawater in it. And when I catch a fish, whether it be a match or pleasure fishing, I always like to put that fish straight in the, in the bucket with the, in the seawater uh, so it doesn't have to roll around in the hot sand. Um, and then if we want to return a fish, then it's going to give it a much better chance of survival and we're going to do a lot less damage to the fish. Also quite handy when you're baiting up just to wash your hands off it as well, but what I would say is regular changes, uh, keep that water fresh so that when you do put a fish in it, it's got uh, the best chance of uh, recovery and survival. I think we're going to call it a day now. It's been a, it's been a lovely session on Chesil Beach. It's been really hard going. Uh, I don't think I've been still much today. I've been winding in, baiting up, trying my heart out. We did manage one place, which is great. It's nice to catch the target species. If you're interested, there's links to all the products I've been using in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope I'll uh, see you again soon.